looking back on how I transitioned into AI and ML as a chemist who's now working at the Idaho National Lab trying to figure out how we can apply AI and deep learning methods, I can say that there's three skills that I really wish I had focused on way earlier in my career. I said three skills, but there's actually another fourth skill which ties in together with these three, and it's really needed to develop these three skills. But I will talk about this fourth skill later on, so keep watching. And by the way, guys, my wife told me that I should not ask you to hit the like button or the subscribe button because she thinks it's really cringe. So let's prove her wrong, shall we? Okay, let's start with the first skill. Early on in my career, I thought if I could just learn how to code and train AI ML models that I would get a job and I was so wrong. Every boot camp and workshop that I attended was so watered down that I thought just by simply doing model.fit, I should be good enough, but that was not the case. After a few months of learning this the hard way, I really took coding seriously. I realized that serious coding is actually about building packages that we can actually apply. Example, in my current job, I had to write a software for a machine and I had no experience as a software developer. Remember, I was a computational chemist. In fact, I'm still a computational chemist. I do think that this was a lucky break for me as someone with zero experience in software development. And because I focused on improving my coding skills, I think that really helped me out here. I think building pipelines and automating tasks require coding skills, and it will really help you and your employer save a ton of time. And I think this is why when you see a job description, employers are always asking for years and years of coding experience. And if you're thinking that, you know, hey, I will use an AI chatbot to, you know, write code and stuff like that, I don't think that's a strong position. You really need to show that you can actually code without using AI chatbots. Using AI to code is absolutely great. Don't get me wrong. It saves you a ton of time, but that's when you're in the job. But when you're trying to find a job, you really have to show that you can code because I think even when you're in the job, whether or not you're using AI to code, it really has some strong value, which is why employers value coding experience. So every time when you're learning something new and there's an opportunity to code it from scratch, give it a try. Try to code it from scratch and it will help you in the long run. Do not neglect the skill, people. Spend a few hours every week to try and code something. It doesn't matter if it's related to what you're interested or not. The next skill that you need to focus on is the bread and butter of the role that you're in. Whether that's a data scientist, ML engineer, AI engineer, none of that matters. Regardless of what your role is, is, this skill is really important. Your skill as an AI and ML engineer will be amplified if you learn the theory behind machine learning. This includes model design, model architecture, the math behind these architectures, and not to forget statistics. Try to have a deep understanding of these concepts. Nobody's hiring you to write a few lines of code and just be done with it. That's not how you solve problems. Focus on the fundamentals, learn as you go, be curious, ask questions, try to learn as much as you can. For example, if you want to learn about deep learning, try to understand how a simple neural network works. Learn the basics like backpropagation, gradient descent, what are the activation functions. You do need to understand mathematically how these concepts work. Understand why people use convolution or, or try to understand how they transform their data and why they transform their data the way they need to. Believe me, when you're stuck with a problem of making your model better, and more reliable, it's always good to know what works and what doesn't work. Simply throwing whatever solutions you can think of on the model and trying to see what sticks is not the way forward. When it comes to solving complex problems, my money is on the person who has the knowledge versus someone who pretends that they can do it. Having said that, you don't need to know everything. You can always learn something new and you have to be open to that. It seems like this is a lot to learn, but this is going to be your bread and butter. So invest the time to learn and believe me, it will not go to waste. Now, moving on to the third skill, which I think is a little bit harder to assess, which is also one of the main struggles for pretty much every employer. A lot of times this third skill comes with experience, which is why employers ask for people with experience and they rely more on people with experience. It doesn't matter what you do for a living inherently. I believe we're all problem solvers. We encounter a problem, we solve it to make our lives better. The challenge is how we go about solving problems and how long it takes for us to solve problems. Companies in general prefer people who can quickly solve these problems, which is why I'm saying that this problem solving skill comes with experience. The more problems you encounter and the more problems you solve, 
the faster you get at solving problems. And your best bet here is to either try to find an internship or shadow someone at work who's working with ML and deep learning and whatnot. This is basically your ticket to getting better at AI and ML, and people really value that. And another aspect of this is if you're trying to become a better programmer and get better at coding, this is also another way you can improve your problem solving skills. Because I think coding in general, most of the time involves problem solving. You encounter an error and then you're trying to analyze, okay, what led to this error? And then you figure out the problem and then you eventually find a solution, which is why I'm saying don't rely on AI chatbots to basically write your entire code. Use it, use it to learn, use it to make things faster, but also put something of your own. Okay, the third skill is over. Now you're all waiting for the fourth skill. And if you're still here, I really value your time. So thank you for that. And here's the fourth skill that you've all waited for. And like I said, it ties into the other three skills that I just mentioned. Looking back, the biggest challenge that I faced was staying motivated and trying to learn something new. AI and ML was something new to me and I doubted myself every step of the way. So let me tell you this, you have to rewire your brain to think that learning something new is actually good. In fact, it's the best thing in the world. Almost every day, there's something new coming out in the world of AI and machine learning. You don't need to learn everything that comes out, but if you think that you have enough knowledge, enough experience, then my friend, the train has left the station. You have to be intrigued. You have to stay motivated. And you need to constantly spend time every week to learn something new. Hope you're trying to piece everything that I'm saying together. This is not about just learning to code. This is not about just knowing how ML models work. This is much broader than that. The challenge for you and the opportunity out there, it's not simply to become the best programmer or knowledgeable guy in machine learning. It's someone who can connect these skills and actually solve a real problem. And that takes a lot of learning almost on a daily basis. So shut out all the noise that's out there and focus on these three skills. Number one, become a better programmer. Number two, learn the basics of AI, ML, deep learning as much as possible. Then you need to become a serial problem solver. And the last part is just rinse and repeat. Do the same thing over and over again. Become a better programmer, learn new packages that's out there, learn a new ML model and solve problems with it. Don't judge yourself, don't overthink, don't live in the loop of thinking that this is really hard. Just focus on these three things and don't look back. And if you want resources to achieve this, check out this video right here and help me prove my wife wrong. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next one.